In this lesson, we're going to go over code documentation. Again, I cannot uh, stress enough how important code documentation is. Good code documentation is going to save somebody a lot of time in the future. It may be you, and it may be somebody else. Remember that you can write code now, and in three months wonder, well, what in the world is this code doing? And if you write it and it's handed off to somebody else, they're not going to know what you were thinking or doing. It's so vitally important to write comments in code. Well, for functions, we have a standard set of comments. The function description, the precondition, and the postcondition. And these comments should accompany the prototype of the functions. They're really not necessary to put with the function definitions. You can if you want to. But where it's really important is with the prototypes in the header file. So what's a function description? It's a very clear and concise description of what the function does for the user. It should also include some statement of resources that are needed. And it's not to state how it is done, but what it is done, what's going to be done by this function. Now, before I get into describing preconditions and postconditions, I want to make a statement about what is a side effect. A side effect is any action that the function engages in that is not a direct mapping of the inputs to the outputs. And when I say outputs, I mean the return values. So what are possible side effects? Well, the, the most important one that you should think about are reference parameters. What can possibly happen with a reference parameter? Something that you pass to the function can be changed back in the calling function. Output statements to the screen, that's a side effect. The function may start a robot. It may close a gate on uh, some sort of a chemical uh, reaction device. There's all sorts of possibilities of what side effects might be, other than the direct mapping of inputs to return values. OK, a precondition states it is very, very, very simple. It states what must be true of the inputs to the function before the execution, and that will guarantee the post condition. And a post condition states what has to be true after successful execution of the function, including all side effects, given that the preconditions have been met. It's sort of like setting up a contract between you, the person who has written this function and whoever is going to use the function. And also you should note that none is perfectly good precondition for a function. Okay? Three preconditions should never contain uh, some statement that is obvious or redundant or irrelevant. Okay, for one, one example is you might have a function that takes two ints. You should never state in the precondition, well, the first argument must be an int. Well, that's stated in the prototype. It's stated in the parameter list. It doesn't need to be said. You'll find that most of the time, your preconditions are going to be some statement of the range of values that the parameter must take on. So for example, if you're writing a function to calculate the area of a circle, well, the radius that you pass to that function should be positive. It should not be zero. That should be said in the precondition. And however you say it, it should be clear. It should be good English. OK, so again, post conditions, it's very important to include everything that's important. What is going to be true after that function has been successfully executed? Also, never state what is not true or not a result of the function being executed. Of course, none should never be a post condition. If there's no post condition after a function, then I don't know, maybe that suggests that your function is going to blow up the computer or something like that. But certainly you should not put none. Something has to be true. Otherwise, I think you should throw away that function. And once again, all of these comments should be placed above or before the prototype of the functions. Now here are some examples. Let's take a look at the greetings function. The greetings fu here's a very clear description. The greetings function will output a message to the screen greeting the user. That's it. Very clear. Precondition? None. There are no parameters. So there are no preconditions on parameters that don't exist. Post condition? Message output to the screen. There it is. Very simple, very concise. 
what must be true of the parameters for the function to work right, and post condition what's true after it's executed. The cylinder volume function will calculate and return the volume of the right circular cylinder with base radius rad and height ht. Precondition, both parameters rad and height must be positive values. The post condition, volume of the cylinder is returned. Very, very simple. The swap function, and again, as you can see, what I have here is you can write description or not write description. There's no set format on that. And some people like to write pre, and some people like to write precondition, uh, write it out in, in all uh, the full form of the word. So the swap function will swap the values of the arguments sent to it. Precondition, none. Values of the arguments will be swapped back in the calling function. So note that we have made a point to say something about what's going to be true back in the calling function because these are indeed reference parameters. So be very careful about writing good comments for your functions and you'll make somebody happy in the future.